Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to Damascus Road Church. We're going to start with some worship. You can feel free to stand up and sing along with us. And uh, yeah, so later we'll have time to go meet people for prayer. So then you can find people you haven't spoken to and then get to pray with them. But right now we're going to start with some worship. We've been great by love, he's taken a hold and we have broken through that he has shown. We have left to serve, he's called us to go, so let's go follow, let's go follow him. Message here today for the announcements, for the God story we hear, for everything that's going to happen, Lord, that you'll be revealed. Be magnified, God, for your praise. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to move among us, to move through us, to speak to each one of us, into each other's lives, as we, as we spend this time as a community, Lord, come into your body. Praise you. Perfect love, wrap 
praise you, God. We give you all the glory, Lord. And we welcome you to move here among us. And to pour your spirit out to God over this whole world. That in every day we can see your works done. Form groups of max three to four people, and um, yeah, we'll have five to ten minutes for prayer. Then we can share what you want to ask God for, what you want to thank God for, and we can pray for each other. Your love so deep is washing over me. Your face is all I see. You are my. or find where things are written out. We send an email every week. It's normally Tuesday, Wednesday that we send it out. So if you want to get that email, you can subscribe through the bit.ly link and the D-R-I-T-N are all capitalized. That's actually important. You have to have those capitalized. But the things that are going on this week. So tomorrow morning, we have our Monday morning devotional that is at 7 o'clock in the morning that you can join online so you don't have to leave your house while it's icy and snowy, just join online. Uh, and that normally takes about 45 minutes or so where we have some time of worship and uh, someone shares a short encouragement, short idea, and then we take time to pray with and for each other. So you can join that online and that link is in that email that we send out. If you're like, hey, I haven't ever received the email yet, but I want to join, uh, find me and I can make sure you get that link. Uh, coming up on Wednesday. So Drum was already back in action this last Wednesday. Uh, Drum is our university ministry, Damascus Road University Ministry, short Drum. Uh, so it's targeted towards university people, but realistically, anyone who's in their late teens, 20s, and even into their 30s shows up, and that's totally cool. Um, and they're having a worship night this Wednesday, so if you want to come to that at 7.30 at the uh, church that's on St. Peter's Strat 6, you can join that. Um, more stuff having to do with university ministry, so we're connected with uh, a group of ministries that's not just in Maastricht, but also in Utrecht, and I think there's one in Rotterdam, uh, and so the leaders of those came together and said, wouldn't it be awesome if we would have something all together at some point? So on March 4th, you can already sort of see the date up in Utrecht, so only a two hour train ride away or so. Uh, they're going to have a, uh, a one day retreat for those that have been part of drum. It's sort of like break a day, except it's with more groups. So that should be uh, an encouragement to each other, the, the unity and 
getting to meet other Christians in this country is a great thing to get to do. So there'll be more details, but already know the 4th of March, there's going to be this thing up in Utrecht for anyone who's part of Drum would be welcome to join. Um, back here, locally, not away in Utrecht, we have small groups, uh, like Bible study groups. We call them journey groups because the idea is we're together as, as people that are on a journey of, of growing in what God has for us and, and finding out what that means to really follow him better. So if you are not part of one of our journey groups but would like to, those meet kind of throughout the week at different times. There are Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, we do have one that's online. Most of them are in person at people's houses in various parts of the city as well as over the border in Belgium. And some of those are for kind of anyone of any age, and some of those are more focused towards those university students. So in short, there's options. And if you want to be a part of one, there's one we can make sure you can be a part of. Uh, if you're interested in that, said, hey, yeah, I'll uh, try it out at least once. The best person to talk to about this is also, no offense against anyone else in the room, but the most beautiful woman in the room is my wife, Christine Lunders. Uh, so she's the one to talk to. If you raise your hand, yes, find her or me, and I know how to get in contact with her, and I'll meet you there. Uh, so if you want to join one of those, she'll be the one to talk to, and they're already starting up. Some of them have already had a few in this year. Others are like just this week starting up, but they're going. Uh, this Friday evening, we are going to have our late night prayer that happens the last Friday of every month, pretty much. And that goes from 9 o'clock at night until midnight, also in the same place where drum meets. So at St. Peter's Shot 6. Uh, and it's a time to, to focus on praying together. For those that were here last week and heard Blaze talking about fasting, fasting and prayer often go together, and the, the power of prayer we believe in. But also if you want to join us then and, and fast for any amount of time on that Friday, that is another way to engage in, in that sort of prayer time. Whether you do that for breakfast or lunch or dinner or the whole day or, or just join us and say, hey, I'll, I'll fast in between 9 and midnight. I wouldn't eat then anyway. Some of you actually would, but... Uh, that's something that you can join in and we can be praying together this Friday night coming up. Then, after you've prayed and hopefully got some sleep, on Saturday, we're having a like community service volunteering thing. So through various organizations, but it's all through Serve the City, but various churches as well as non-church groups help out with volunteering in our city. And so next Saturday, hopefully... It won't be snowing at that point because a few of the things are outside, but other uh, activities or projects that you can get involved in were things like uh, playing with kids at the refugee center or doing makeup for the moms of those kids while the kids are playing elsewhere uh, or helping at the children's farm that's in the Hague or helping serve the city move because we're getting a new location and I'm excited to move stuff. But if you've ever had to move an office, it's like moving a house, it's just, it's moving. I don't know anyone who loves moving. So if you want to help me love it more, you can show me what it's like. Uh, so yeah, that's Saturday, and you can sign up through our website, fccdistrict.nl, or it'll even give you the direct thing with the QR code. How high tech is that? Um, yeah. And if you want to give money towards the church, we have a different QR code that you can use that you can either give 20 euros that way or you can give through a bank account online. You're not required to give to be around as part of this church, but if you want to support the work that we do, we do have to pay for rent and salaries and musical instruments and all those sorts of things. So if you want to give towards that, you certainly can. Um, so those are the announcements. Uh, now, uh, Brother Patrick, if you would come forward. Um, Patrick was going to get to share a bit of a God story. So he has been, apart from me and my wife, the person who's been at this church longer than anyone else in this room. Um, and through the last few years, he's been uh, studying and uh, training and praying a lot. And feels like God is calling him to do some more ministry things that will also be outside of Damascus Road kind of time. Um, so he said, hey, can you guys pray for me and, and bless me in that? It's not that I'm 
going to be gone from the church or moving away in that regard, but we won't see them every Sunday, but as a way of saying, hey, we're sending you out, you still become a part of us, but we're blessing you and what God is calling you to do in your life. So we want Patrick to come up and get to share a little about, about that, what's on his heart, and then we'll take some time to pray for him as well. So let's get ready. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, I thank you, Pastor Mark, for summarizing, you know, my introduction. Probably I would not say it better. And like, it's, like he actually said, I think, apart from Nelly, he probably didn't mention, those were like the people I came after in the church. And uh, because of the transitional, transitional nature of our church, you know, people come and go and see them come and go. So it's probably uh, possible that a lot of you don't know me. So like Pastor Mark said, my name is Patrick. Arabo. So I've been in the church for over a decade and um, I am grateful to God that I got to be able to have the opportunity to have served nearly in all parts of the church except the kid ministry, you know, <laughs> do I love kids, you know, and they love me as well. So like Pastor Matthew said, I mean, it's like, uh, how do I say it? It's very difficult for a child to say is going to leave his parents' home. You know, even when we grow up and you go to university or whatever kind of education, you find a vocation, and you go away from home, you will always come back home. So I'm grateful to say that Damascus Road Church is my, my, uh, my heavenly home on earth because of how I came to the church. When I came to the church, like I said a decade ago, <clears throat> I was probably at the lowest in my lifetime, I was you know, going through a very difficult time. I was broken naturally because I was going through a divorce period at that time, and it was very difficult for me. So when I came to the church, we were uh, meeting then at the Stay Okay Hostel. So when I came into the church, after the service, uh, the then uh, pastor of the church, Pastor Kent, I don't know what happened, he just came to me and told me that he think I have a troubled mind, that if he could pray for me, and I told him yes, so he prayed. And in the end, he said, if I had a church where I was fellowshipping, I told him yes. He said, if you like, you can come back at the time, but don't leave your home church. So because of the uh, situation I was in at that time, I just wanted to get away somehow. So I came to uh, Sundays consecutively, and somehow on the third Sunday of my fellowship, fellowship in the church, something happened that just made me say, okay, I'm going to stay in this place and fellowship. And since then, I joined the church and I have served in, like I said, in all the uh, every areas of the church. And like Pastor Matt said, I have gone through a, Bible, uh, a three year a Bible study program. But prior to that, God has always put in my heart to reach out to the youth, you know, generations. And uh, until I stumbled in, on the words three, four years ago, the millennium and generation Z. So I started to actually read about them. and. Uh, and the issues, the struggle with, and all of that. So that's something God lays in my heart to go out and do. And I'll be talking, you know, progressively with Pastor Mans, you know, what transition is going on in my head. So like I said, I'm not leaving the church. I will always come here when there is time for it. But when I'm doing something, I want to do it and focus on it. And I know when I'm, I get involved in that, my regularity in the church here might not be as much. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Pastor Kent. He's not here. He gave me the very opportunity to have seven servant leaders as the first leadership of the church, supporting Pastor Matt. And I also want to say thank you to Pastor Matt for all the support he gave, especially while I was leading the, uh, the prayer ministry for the last seven years with Praveen and Lucy. So for all the support he gave to us and I, one thing I cherish, there's so many things about him, but one of the things is that when we have activities, no matter how busy his schedule is, he will always be around to support us. So I think that's something that I also invite, you know, in my leadership skill as I go out into the world. And I also want to say thank you to Christine, uh, the wife of Pastor Mars. You know, uh, I'm not always ashamed to say when I come out here that I love how with the love of God. Because I remember when I lost my mom, she reached out to me in a way that I never expected. 
So, so thank you for all the prayer you pray for me personally. And yeah, in support of also coming to the prayer minister, the prayer activity we have out there where sometimes there were nobody around. You know, it's either just me or Bravin or Lucy. But that's you showed up. I thank you for those times. And I also want to thank all the members of the congregation who has worked with me in every department that I have worked, especially with the prayer ministry, the time we have together. I say thank you, and that is the spirit of God that he has laid in our hearts. So I want to say thank you to Bravi <laughs> for the time we had together. I don't know why this is not here this morning, but okay, anyway. We had an amazing time visiting the prayer ministry. I remember like Bravi traveled a lot because of his work, and then he has to you know, do the worship on the, the prayer ministry, and sometimes he's sleeping, yet he's just there. And the same commitments uh, Lucy had, you know, she's a doctor now, but she was doing her intention, she really had to go everywhere, but still because we made a commitment that and a covenant with God that we wanted to really hold the prayer ministry together, so they helped me a lot. And for me as well, it was not fun sometimes. My work, I have to work early, I'm going to finish the prayer ministry, I have to sleep on the hard chair in the church, but it was all to the glory of God. And I want to say thank you to everyone who were part of the prayer ministry. So, in a nutshell, like Pastor Mark has said, I would like to be prayed for that God can give me the grace to do the work He has called me. But before that, I also just want to say that in the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 45, one time Jesus Christ was going out and, and the people were rushing after him to sell him. And he said to them, he has not uh, come to be served, he came to serve. So I just want to encourage all the youth and the younger, the, uh, the youth, the older people in the church. There's no other way we can reach the heart of God than the heart of service. So I encourage you to get information from the pastor or the wife or the servant leaders, how you can serve in the church. Because that's the only way you can only get fulfilled in experiencing the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. Because I serve in the church with all my heart and I experience the joy that I can never, you know, explain with people that I met, people who I came to know. In serving people in the church, there were couples I met, I think 20, 13, 14. Um, they've now lived in Australia. They had their first child and they made me the godfather of their son. <clears throat> Just because of that. The relationship that I have with them, and I can say I had all of that to the church. So I encourage you to serve and the love of God in your heart. And as you do that, you, yeah, God will have a relationship with you like you will have with me. So I just wanted to uh, to encourage you as I go on with the project that I'm very into. I will be updating Pastor Pat, but my I, my heart is to sell the youth and to help them bring the love of Christ to them. Thank you. So we'll have Patrick stay up here, and anyone who wants to come around him and, and lay hands on him or be next to him as we pray, you're welcome to. If you just want to stay in your seat, that's also okay. Um, and I'll from the start, and I'll have Christine close the prayer, and if people want to pray in between around him, that's also okay. Heavenly Father, we praise you and give you all the glory. You are the first and the last. You're the one who has created this world. You're the one who's created us. You're the one who's created family. And you're the one who's created Patrick. God, I thank you for what you've been doing in his life for more than a decade in his time in the area of monastery. And you say that in your word says that some plant, some water, but you're the one who makes it grow. So thank you for the opportunities of people in this church planting seeds and watering seeds in his life, but you're the one who has helped Patrick to grow and grow and grow. And now as, as you're sending him out into the streets, God, may he be one who's planting seeds and watering seeds and you make it grow. God, may your word go from his mouth with power. May, his, may your spirit speak through him in ways that they'll see signs and miracles and wonders that, that help people see you and glorify you as the God Father in heaven. And may he be like a light 
a city on a hill that cannot be hit, and that people would see the good work that he's doing, good works that you've prepared in advance for him to do, and praise you in heaven for it, God. Thank you so much for my brother. And I pray that we would continue to love as you love us, that he would teach the things that you have taught to him, and that he would obey with the same courage and confidence that Jesus obeyed. And see great things happen because of it. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for Patrick, Lord. Thank you for his life. God, I thank you that before he was born, you knew him. God, I thank you that in the highs and in the lows of life, you've, you've always been there, God. We thank you so much. Like this verse comes to mind where the psalmist says, where can I where can I hide from your love? You're there. When I go to the heights, you're there. When I go to the depths, you're there. And Patrick, as a church, we bless you in Jesus' name. We pray that God would fill you with a new measure of his Holy Spirit. We pray that you would continue to walk in step with his Holy Spirit. God, we pray that you would give him um, divine appointments. Would you bring people on his path that need to hear your truth and your love, God? Would you just breathe your spirit through him, Lord? We pray, Lord, that you would help Patrick in, in every part of life to depend on you. God, would you increase humility? Would you increase um, obedience, God? Thank you so much for what you've been doing in his life, God. Thank you for the blessing that Patrick is. Thank you for how you've touched us through his life. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Chelsea. Thank you for being here today. Um, today's Bible reading is in the book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 22 to 35. It says as follows. Then the apostles and elders gathered together with the whole church in Jerusalem, chose delegates, and they sent them to Antioch of Syria with Paul and Barnabas to report on this decision. The men chosen were two of the church leaders, Judas, also called Barnabas, and Silas. This is the letter they took with them. This letter is from the apostles and elders, your brothers in Jerusalem. It is written in the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia. Greetings. We understand that some men from here have troubled you and upset you with their teaching, but we did not send them. So we decided, having come to complete agreement, to send you official representatives, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sending Judas and Silas to confirm that we have decided concerning your question, what we have decided concerning your question. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these few requirements. We must abstain from eating food offered to idols, from consuming blood or the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immor immorality. If you do this, you will do well. Farewell. The messengers went at once to Antioch, where they called a general meeting of the believers and delivered the letter. And there was great joy throughout the church that day as they read this encouraging message. Then Judas and Silas, both being prophets, spoke at length to the believers, encouraging and strengthening their faith. They stayed for a while, and then the believers sent them back to the church in Jerusalem with a blessing of peace. Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. This is the word of God. Um, of that Bible reading, well, I'll, I'll mention it again, but some of the things I, I hope you picked up on or words that stuck out were encouraging one another and strengthening the church instead of putting a barrier uh, or a burden on people. And, and we're going to look a bit more at that today. I'll get back to it. So as a church for the last few months, we've been going through the book of Acts, looking at ways that we are called to the same sorts of actions, how we're supposed to live this out, not just see a nice story from others, but what can we glean from this to live out ourselves? We looked at all sorts of things, like last week, acts of fasting, or uh, acts of prophecy, acts of all these sorts of things, a lot of it having to come from like, how can we put into use the the spiritual gifts or or the strength that god gives us and today i want us to look at acts of championing others not just 
how can we do kind of our role, but how can we actually help others to use their spiritual gifts and to use the, the spiritual fruit that's supposed to be showing in their lives? How can we spur one another on to, to this love and good deeds that we as, as a body of Christ are all supposed to be living out? So that's not just, okay, how can I do this for me? But how can I be one that's supporting and, and encouraging and, and championing other people? Um, as with so many times that I start a sermon, uh, our first example of this starts with Jesus. Uh, and, and in the book of Acts, the first example of this starts with Jesus. In, in Acts chapter 1, he is, is teaching his disciples, but then in Acts 1, 8, it's a very well-known verse from Acts, he's telling them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus says, you're going to be empowered, and you're going to go do some really special work. Jesus is, is seeing value in these apostles. He's, he's giving them a, a mission, yes, but it's... Jesus saying, you can do it would be, I think, really meaningful, right? Like, if, if you had Jesus show up in front of you right now and be like, hey, I've got this job for you, and you're going to receive the power that you need to do it, and you're going to go throughout the world doing your job. And that would be an encouragement, right? I mean, that would be nice. That would be something I would remember. Like, ten years from now, I'd be like, but there was this time Jesus told me this. It would stick out to me. Especially if I was sort of this no-name village boy out of nowhere that he said, you're going to do this throughout the world. Like, like these apostles Jesus is speaking to weren't the people who were well-traveled, well-read, well-educated, well-bred, well-anything. They were just regular old guys that fished and smelled like fish. Or, or had all these different types of jobs, but most of them had probably, before Jesus not left their country that much maybe not even left their province right like people who just are born and raised in limburg and have like gone to the capital a few times for those a school trip like that's what these types of guys are they've maybe been to jerusalem a few times but like they weren't they weren't the ones who've been like oh i've been to rome before i know what that's like i took a picture with the mona lisa like jesus is saying to these guys who are not seen as anything important throughout the world you're going to receive power i'm giving you authority to speak on my behalf jesus wasn't going to do it all himself he was going to give other people the opportunities to do that work so it started at jesus and then that kind of trend continued where the apostles then passed along what they had received Um, and the Holy Spirit was going to be a part of that. If you've been around uh, churches that like, did sermons on the Holy Spirit, you might have heard this Greek word. It's parakletos. It's kind of like one of the titles the Holy Spirit is given. Like, the Holy Spirit will be our parakletos. And um, sort of literally, that is one who is called to come alongside. One who just, like, comes and stands next to you. And it gets translated as as someone who comes alongside to comfort, so like sometimes the comforter, also the advocate, sort of like a lawyer stands beside you and is alongside, uh, a, a teacher, like an instructor, not just someone who stands in front of the class, but like one who's working alongside you to help teach you a, a practical task, uh, a, a guide. All of these things are kind of wrapped up in this word paracletos. And that's, a word that's used for the Holy Spirit. Also, Jesus is referred to as our parakletos in, in 1 John. And throughout the book of Acts, the apostles, uh, uh, multiple times, I think it's like 20 different times that word or a variant of the word parakaleo is used. That, that they're supposed to parakaleo with the parakaleo they've received. Sounds like a weird way of putting it, but like they're supposed to comfort others with the comfort they've received. They're supposed to teach and guide others with the teaching and guidance they've received. They're supposed to 
advocate for others as they have been advocated for themselves. It was supposed to pass along. And, and so they're coming alongside. That's part of the part of the championing others. And so that idea of parakleo, even though the word is used, like I said, about 20 times, the idea of it shows up in places even when the word isn't used. For example, Acts chapter 1. Jesus has told the apostles, you guys are going to go throughout the world and share. You're going to receive power to do this. And later in that chapter, Peter says, we need to find somebody else to go with us. And so they end up choosing Matthias and saying, hey, this guy is also going to do the same stuff we're going to be doing. Jesus just told us he's going to send us out. Let's get someone else to come along and do that too. It's, it's this idea of parakaleo, right? We're passing this on. A few chapters later, Peter and John are going to the temple at the time of prayer, and there is a beggar who can't walk. And the guy, like, Peter says, hey, look at me. The guy's like, ooh, money, good. And Peter says, I'm, I'm actually not rich. I don't have silver or gold to give you, but what I do have, that's what I'm going to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he, his legs are, like, strengthened. And he jumps up and starts jumping and leaping and praising God throughout the temple. That they've strengthened someone, not on their own strength, but through the, the power of the name of Jesus. But it's just like the guy keeps clinging to them. Like, as they're walking through, he's with them. He's come alongside them. And he's singing the praises just the, as they were supposed to be witnessing as well, right? Like, another person who, like, as they were strengthened... They strengthen someone else. Advocating also shows up. Um, later with Peter, a uh, couple chapters later, six chapters later, I think, there's this story of uh, a Roman centurion named Cornelius. So the Jewish people didn't like the fact that the Romans were in control of their country. Most of us can get that idea, right? Like if someone's controlling your country, but they're a different country, you don't necessarily like them. The military people that are part of that, you like even less. Well, that's what this guy is. Cornelius is a Roman military guy who's part of being in control of the country. And God sends an angel to Cornelius to say, hey, go call this guy named Peter. God sends a vision to Peter that says, hey, people are coming for you, you should go with them. So Peter does. And Peter realizes what's happening. He's like, okay, so God, you're sending me to the house of a guy that my people don't like, and that even as part of our like ritual traditions, I shouldn't walk into his house because that might make me unclean. But he shows up and goes, okay, uh, you called me, what do you want? And Cornelius tells the story. An angel showed up, said call you, and you're supposed to tell me something. So I'm listening. And Peter then says, okay, uh, let's start talking about Jesus. And as Peter starts talking about Jesus, what happens is without even Peter trying to make this happen, the Holy Spirit comes upon these people and, and the same empowerment that Peter and, and John and the others received, now Cornelius and the others are receiving. And Peter goes, oh, I get it now. God is willing to accept people from all cultures, like all nations, he is not one that shows favoritism. Wow. Because they have received the same thing I've received. They, the parakaleo has been passed along. Peter's excited. This is great. This is so awesome. And he goes back kind of to his more home area. And there are other people like, Peter, we heard what you did. You went to the house of someone you're not supposed to. And that's when Peter starts advocating for others. He says, wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you the story first. This is what God was doing. It wasn't I was acting as a rogue on my own. I wasn't going maverick. God set this up and they received the same spirit that we received. Receive them. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, then if that's it. We're fine with it. And, and Peter advocated for others 
who honestly had the same right to stand up and speak, but probably wouldn't have given the space to. And so Peter took that place of advocating. Um, one other time, like with teaching, uh, chapters later, there's a guy named Apollos, and he's a really good speaker. He apparently just he makes things sound beautiful, he's great, and he's talking about Jesus, and, and he's talking rightly about Jesus, but he doesn't understand the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is also supposed to bring into that equation. And so like he understood like just a baptism of repentance, but not being baptized in the Spirit, it says that he, he just didn't know about this. And so uh, a wife and a husband, Priscilla and Aquila, take Apollos and like come alongside him and say, hey, come here, we'll, we'll be beside you, and we're going to teach you more accurately what you're talking about. Like there, there's more than you realize. And they teach him more accurately. They parakaleo with the parakaleo they have received. And then it's like, now you know. Now we're going to send you out. And the church blesses Apollos as he goes to go share this along as well. So they've kind of been doing these actions like what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do because it's that Holy Spirit living in them, living that out. Not just for themselves, but to help champion others so that they can be part of this work. And so something that you find, uh, what is it, six times? One, two, three, four, five times. Five times uh, through the book of Acts is laying on of hands, where they, they lay hands on people. And that's normally, it happens for like two kind of different reasons, but in a similar idea. So sometimes we see that apostles are laying hands on people so that they can receive that same Holy Spirit that the apostles received. They're passing along what they, what they got, and that's why they lay hands on them. This happens in uh, Samaria when Peter and John go down, and people who have received Jesus said, yes, we, we believe that Jesus is this Messiah that we're waiting for. And then Peter and John go down, lay hands on them, and they receive the Holy Spirit. Also happens in Ephesus later when Paul shows up and is talking with people. He lays hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. So that's one part of it is, is that helping others or, or being a symbol for, for others receiving that authority, that power, that, that same spirit. But it's also used for kind of symbolically sending people out, passing along a like, hey, you have this ministry, you have this work to go out toward. So when there's the need for people to help with food distribution to sort of these Grecian Jewish widows, the apostles say, hey, pick seven guys who are, who are wise, who are filled with the Spirit, who are the ones that live this out the right way, and we're going to entrust them with this work. And so they lay hands on those men so that it's showing we're... We're putting them forward. We're, we're supporting them. We're, we're saying they can do this work. Happens again uh, later when um, Paul and Barnabas are, are during a prayer meeting set out and the Holy Spirit says, send those guys out on a mission trip. And then the leaders get around them, lay hands on them and say, we're, we're sending you out for this mission. That's part of why what you just saw earlier in the service happen, where, where Patrick is someone who's going to be sent out doing ministry. And so we gathered around him and people laid hands on him and prayed for him to, to, to symbolize that and to show this is, this is what we're doing. We're, we're trying to champion other people and say, God has this work for you. And we're encouraging you toward that and blessing you as you go. So that happens multiple times throughout the book of Acts. Um, but alongside that, there are these warnings that pop up. So it's probably good to mention the, the warnings of it as well. Because not everybody should be put in front to lead. Or at least not in certain circumstances. In the book of Acts, we have a few times where things... Uh, bad stuff happens uh, to people who are not taking God seriously. There's this couple, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, that 
have seen other people in the church who are being really generous and who give their money and it's, it's this great thing and there's joy and the church is growing. And so they decide, hey, we want to give money as well to the church. Uh, so we're going to sell off our property, but we just don't want to give all of it. But we want to say we're giving all of it. So they bring the money like, hey, this is everything we got for selling off that property. And, and Peter through the Holy Spirit is able to realize you're lying. Why are you doing that? And the sad thing is, both the husband and the wife, as they lie, one sort of after the other, both end up falling down dead. But we're not exactly told why, why they did that in the first place. Why did what was the benefit of saying this is 100% of the money versus 80% of the money? We don't know. We do know that there's deceit and there's lying involved. And maybe there was the hope that they would get attention or fame or maybe power through it. Like, oh, see, we're helping to invest in this, so maybe we should get some more say in what's going on. Um, whatever the reason was behind it, they were trying to deceive the people in front of them. And we're told even trying to deceive God and his Holy Spirit. And that doesn't go well. So it's not... We should be warned and careful of championing people who are being deceitful. That's not something that we want to lay hands on and bless, so to speak. Another one then comes not that long later. I mentioned that these people who are living in Samaria decide to follow Jesus, and then Peter and John come and lay hands on them, and they're receiving the Holy Spirit. And we don't know all of what happened, but something visible happened. That, that when people were receiving the Holy Spirit, it wasn't just, oh, I feel warm inside. But there was, there was an obvious change that was happening in these people's lives. So this other guy named Simon, who was sort of a, like a magician, trickster guy, sees what's going on and is like, I want to have that same power too. So he pulls out his money and goes up to Peter and John and says, hey, can I pay you for you to give me that that thing that happens that when you lay hands on people they change can you give can i do that too i'll pay and peter again uh, this guy at least doesn't fall down dead but peter says no 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 no, no. You, you, but, may your money perish with you that's not it's not what this is about god's kingdom isn't supposed to be bought off or paid off for things and he can see that there's something wicked in this guy's heart. That he's wanting authority, he's wanting power, uh, but he's not wanting like he's not wanting God's way. And so instead of them being like, this is great, if we just lay hands on you, then you'll be able to lay hands on more people. Wonderful. No, they say that's that's not the kind of person we're wanting to put in front either. Someone who is being deceitful or someone who's just wanting power. It's a power grab. No. That's, that's not what we want to encourage. So we do have to be careful as, as we go to, to champion other people that we're not championing deceit or, or this like greed and, and power envy, which then shows up again a little bit later in people who are Jewish but not necessarily Jesus followers. There's a king who is receiving glory from people like oh wow he's like one of the gods and we're told that he's just concerned about how awesome he is and so like oh my own power and god strikes him dead because he's not giving glory to the right place right he wants the power for himself sort of like simon did and then a little later there's this other sorcerer guy uh who's sort of a consultant to a man in power that's trying to deceive that man away from Jesus, sort of like Ananias and Sapphira were being deceitful, and that guy goes blind for a while, and like God judges him also clearly. So these are sort of like mirroring things of like, deceit, deceit, not good. Don't encourage that. Power grabbing, power grabbing, not good. Give glory where it's deserved to God alone. Okay, so that was a bit of a side note. Um, I want to take a little bit to look at two people who are living examples 
according to the book of Acts, in, in championing others. Uh, and the first one was, his name is Barnabas. Um, well, his name is actually Joseph, but he's known by Barnabas, and that name means son of encouragement. That's at least what Luke tells us. There was a time, uh, I don't know if you've ever had this type of question, like, oh, if you could be just one person in the Bible, who would you be? Have you ever received a question like that or tried to answer it? Or am I the only one? No one's ever tried to answer that question? Like, oh, if I could pick to be like one person, I'd be only one. This, wow. I apparently read the Bible very differently than all of you. Um, if I had to pick one, it's sometimes hard. I mean, Jesus obviously is the first one. But if, if we take that out of it, it would be hard for me not to say Barnabas is a good choice. Um, and maybe not even just like for all of my life, but for my role as a pastor, if I'm going to be a pastor of Damascus Road, I want to pastor kind of like Barnabas did. And let me tell you a bit more why I think that. Uh, the first time we see Barnabas is he's one of these people who sells off land so that he can take care of the physical needs of other people. So he's, he's generous. He's giving. He's someone who actually cares about taking care of the physical needs of others. And so that's where we first see him and his name. Like, oh, he's the son of encouragement. He's someone who's, who's quite giving that way. But there's a lot more to his story. Um, later, Saul, who you've listened to our sermons over the last, I don't know, 10 years, or if you know the name of Damascus Road, uh, it's based on this guy Saul, who, who uh, hated Jesus at first, and then has this experience with Jesus that completely changes his life. And so that he starts wanting to tell everybody about Jesus. Um, but he gets excited and wants to tell everybody about Jesus, and all these other people remember him from his past. And like, he was the guy that was like killing people. Saul was the guy who was throwing like my friends in jail for following Jesus. And now Saul's like, hey, I'm totally into Jesus. And they're like, I don't trust it. Because, I mean, that's the easiest way to get into an organization is just be a mole, right? And be like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally for it all now. And then you get inside, and then you can destroy everything. No, I don't trust Saul. And Barnabas is the one who actually goes and talks with them. And, and spends time to hear the story. And comes alongside of Saul. Saul, come with me. And goes to the apostles and says, This is legit. This, this man really, really is now changed. And you should accept him. Barnabas is like a connector of people. He advocates for others. He championed Paul. Saul later became known as Paul. He says, hey, come along with me. And it starts out that way. Saul is welcomed, and Saul starts preaching, and then Saul gets people wanting to kill him. And so they say, maybe, Saul, you should not stay here because we don't want to cause a riot. So Saul is sort of sent away. And Barnabas uh, continues being his like awesome self, I guess, like making friends, teaching, being good at this stuff. Years later, the gospel is spread to um, a place called Antioch, where it's it's outside of of Judea and Samaria. It's it's people who are like Gentiles, and and they're hearing this good news of like, oh, the people there are are following Jesus, and there's good stuff happening, supposedly. Let's send someone we trust to go check it out. Barnabas, you're good with people, but apparently probably good with people of different backgrounds. Let's send you to go check this out. So Barnabas goes to the city of Antioch, and we're told that, like, he's speaking there, and, and the church is being strengthened. It's, it's being paracleo, and it's, the, the church is being strengthened. It's growing. Lots of people are being added. And Barnabas doesn't think, man, I am awesome. Let's make me like the supreme ruler of the church in Antioch. Instead, he goes, I know a guy that I should, that I should bring along too. So Barnabas goes to find Saul, says, hey, Saul, come with me. Because you have a gift that God wants to use in Antioch. And so Barnabas pulls Saul along. And we're told that Saul starts speaking, and the same thing that was happening with Barnabas, of like Barnabas speaking, church strengthened, church grows, starts happening with Saul there as well. Church strengthened, church grows. Barnabas just didn't go like, 
I've got my gifts and I'm using them good. But he looked for others to encourage their gifts as well. And that happened with Saul. And, and there's, I think, a lot of influence Barnabas had on how Paul later did ministry. That's its own sermon, actually two sermons, which I preached uh, eight years ago. But it's, it's like, there's so much that Barnabas, I think, did in Saul's life. But it wasn't just like, oh, well, Barnabas is like saying Paul is my favorite and I'll just do stuff for Paul. Later, there's another young man, John Mark, that Barnabas invests into. And John Mark makes some mistakes, seems to have troubles, but Barnabas continues to believe in him and say, yes, we should work with him. And even when Paul is like, no, I do not want John Mark with us, no. Barnabas says, I'm sticking with him. I'm not giving up on this guy. I, I believe in what God wants to do with him. And later in his life, we, we see where Paul and John Mark apparently make up. And Paul says, hey, John Mark is useful. But that probably happened because Barnabas was willing to stick with him, was willing to champion someone else and not just let go of him quickly. And we need to have people in our lives that are like that, ones that will see our mistakes and won't give up on us. But we also need to be those kind of people for others. We need to champion those around us. And help tell their story. And that's, that's the last person I'll bring up. Um, someone who's not really mentioned in the book of Acts, but is important in the book of Acts, is the guy who wrote the book of Acts. His name is Luke. Um, Luke didn't get his name put in a lot of places. He's not seen as that important. But Luke told the story. And without Luke... Book of Acts, we wouldn't have that. We also wouldn't have one of the four Gospels, one of the biographies of Jesus, uh, without Luke. And that's in part because it seems like Paul championed Luke, but Luke then turned around and, and made sure to tell the stories of others. We don't often look at historians and think, man, they're doing this great work for Jesus. But I actually think those that are willing to like write biographies and share stories and be historians that is part of championing what God has done and helping others realize what God can do in their lives ahead. Uh, so if you're like a student of history, God bless you. Use that well. Uh, that's certainly not the only thing that God can use. But Luke is one that I don't know that he gets enough credit for being a champion of others. Uh, and that can be its old home sermon which was also about eight years ago but keeping this one short if i can but luke saw the life of paul um saw his his scars probably very literally saw his scars luke uh was apparently a doctor and paul was someone who got like whipped and beaten regularly it made sense that he wanted to have a traveling companion that was a doctor <laughs> right like just practical Luke saw ups and downs. He saw times when people listened to Paul's message and received it with joy. And he saw the times when there were riots and people were trying to kill him. He saw the times when Paul was weak. He saw the times when Paul was strong. And, and he helped to tell that story. Not for the glory of Paul, but for the glory of, of God. So that others would know truly who Jesus was and how the Holy Spirit can work through people. Do you know anyone well enough to be able to tell their story? Like, can you be a Luke for someone else who helps to tell the story that, that brings glory to God? That might be something to uh, consider. How can we be involved in each other's lives so that we can tell each other's stories? So, uh, last question to consider, uh, since we're right at one o'clock. Um, who can you help to move forward? Who, who can you sort of come alongside, you can paracleo, to help them use their gifting and grow in what they're good at? And honestly, that will help you grow in, in your giftings as well. But 
Can you take a moment and uh, the band will come forward. We're going to sing one last song, The Blessing, which is hopefully a blessing for you. And maybe it, as you hear that song or sing along with that song, consider who is it that you can sort of speak blessing to? Who can you move forward? Who can you champion? Who can you support? Who can you encourage? Who can you help teach and train? Who can you advocate for that needs it? So that we can be like those from the book of Acts that received the Holy Spirit and then passed along what they received. Now hopefully you've received something that you will pass along as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making us like vessels that can be poured into and also poured out. May we not just hold on to the stuff that we learn, but may we pass it along to others in a way that multiplies what you want to do. Thank you for encouraging us, comforting us, advocating for us when we were when we were sinners, when we were people who didn't know you, when we were enemies, you'd say. Jesus stood up for us and, and provided the way for us to receive forgiveness and reconciliation and, and a purpose and, and work to be co-workers and, and friends. There's so much you've given us, God. May we also help others see those great gifts you've given. That through your Holy Spirit, we would come to know everything it is that you want to give us and help others walk in that same spirit and power and knowledge of Jesus. It's in the name and the authority of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
Go and encourage and teach and instruct 